Greetings, greetings, unsettled souls. We're syncing two cameras here. And welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangy reporting for the Media Speaks. And yes, indeed, it is time for the dunce cap of the month award. For those of you who are new viewers or those of you that may not be familiar with exactly what it is that you just tuned into, every month we here at the Correct Views, that would be Chris Dell and I, we go ahead and give the dunce cap of the month out. We nail a dunce cap. I'll show you the tip of it, but you're about to see in a minute. We mail these out to the stupidest people that we find in the entire news cycle throughout any given week, every month, excuse me. And every, every posting, of course, has the dumdy of the day. These are people that weren't quite dumb enough to make the show at the end of the month, but they were, in fact, dumb enough to be mentioned. So every day that I post, we have the dumdy of the day. And once a month, we have the Dump Cap for the Month Award. And of course, you know, there are runner-ups. People that were dumb enough to make the show. We're going to start with them. And these are people that didn't win, but came very, very close. The Daily Caller. Oh, my God. This Common Core math problem asks kids to write the friendly answer instead of the correct one. Um, when I was in school, there were, at college, there was this girl who was much better at math than I'll ever be. She only added or subtracted. She would turn her division and, or excuse me, she only added and multiplied. She would turn her division problems and her subtraction problems into multiplication and uh, addition problems using negative numbers. It didn't mess her up. That's how she liked doing it, decimals and all. There was no teacher to say, don't do it that way. She was questioned on it. Point is, you got the right answer or you didn't. Well, not anymore. There's only one way to do things under socialist Obama, America. A second grader's answers to a common core aligned math worksheet were marked as incorrect because they weren't friendly enough, even though they were the right answers. A screenshot of the worksheet was posted to Twitter. The teacher wrote that even though the questions, addition and subtraction problems were solved correctly, the student used the wrong technique to arrive at the answers. Correct answers, but let's find friendly numbers, wrote the teacher. Let's find a real teacher. Write me. The teacher wanted the student to solve 530 minus 270 in the following manner. First, add 30 to both numbers, changing the problem to 560 to 30. Those numbers, the friendly numbers, that's what they are, because they are supposedly easier to work with. They need a teacher that's easier to work with. This is ridiculous. Though friendly numbers can be useful, the worksheet illustrates the weird priorities of the common core, according to Twitchy. In Common Core Math, it is often not good enough to get the correct answer. Instead, students are required to show higher order thinking skills. In this case, use the associative property. Yes, the associative property is important and should be taught at some point. Unfortunately, we suspect that many seven-year-olds will not be able to understand this particular assignment. With limited days in the school year, wouldn't second graders be better off spending their time attempting to master traditional subtraction algorithms? Of course, that's why they made the dumb the other day. Um, but they didn't win the dunce cap of the month. No, that's still coming. Fox8.com. Maybe this one. Report. Barbie woman uses hypnosis to decrease IQ. I know. I know. It hurts to even hear it. For a woman who says she is obsessed with Barbie, looking like the doll isn't enough, according to the Daily Mail, Blonde Bennett, Blondie Bennett wants to decrease her IQ and is using hypnotherapy to do it. I've always thought Barbie was stupid. Now I guess I'm not alone. Bennett, 38, lives in California and says the sessions are working. She claims she has started feeling dizzy and confused all the time. She's like your regular American. Now all she's got to do is go and listen to The Weeknd, some Kesha, some Drake, and she'll be as dumb as everybody else. Bennett is a former model who reportedly had at least five breast enlargements to make her a size 32JJ. That's bigger than Barbie was. 
She also regularly gets spray tans, Botox, and lip fillers to make her look artificial. She said being brainless is an important part of the transformation into the doll. You know, somebody that's stupid, I almost don't have a problem with them becoming more stupid because it, I, I'm not, first of all, I'm not sure it's possible. Second of all, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Because to do that, you have to already be so unbelievably stupid that you're already there. Um, I can get this person Drake on. Um, Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson. Maybe this gets it. Is this it? Do we get the same music on? Yeah, let's see. Is this the Dove's Cow for the month? No. Nope. A group of employees at South Pungent Sound Community College caused an outage after they made it clear that white people would not be welcomed at the planned diversity happy hour event. College group bans white people from diversity happy hour. Yeah, well, that's great. We want lots of different races here, but we're going to stop different races from showing up. <laughs> <laughs> The event was focused around an effort to build support and community for people of color. You want to create space for white folks to meet and work on racism, white supremacy, and white privilege to better our campus community and ourselves and yourselves. Please feel free to do just that, stated in an email which was sent out to 300 employees. Students at the college expressed their bewilderment at YA diversity, which means multi, a lot of different people for those of you Usher fans. I uh, would specifically exclude people of a certain race. This contradicts the message that they're trying to send. Don't judge people based on color, but they're judging white people because they're white, said one student. Also, I'm so damn sick of hearing about white privilege. There's no damn white privilege. I didn't get any money to go to college because I was white. I had to take out all the same loans and student uh, hang nooses that everybody else does. I had to take, uh, uh, take out the same loans. I, I didn't get uh, scholarships and all this handed to me. Um, even though in my chosen field, I had tons of experience. Um, I didn't get any great special job offers because I was late. It, it's utter BS. Um, the problem is they, they focus on this to keep the races divided. Uh, when What we need to realize is that both the whites and the blacks in this country are being hosed over and dumbed down at alarming speed. And the best thing we can do is keep each other fighting. Don't. College spokesman Kelly Bruce Brass said the exclusion was not condoned by the school, adding, if you want to come, you should be able to come. That just makes a richer conversation. But if you were smart, you wouldn't be on the dumdy. However, despite being forced to apologize, Karama Blockhorn, a program coordinator for the school's diversity and equity center, Helped write the invitation that seemingly doubled down. What a bossy tramp. We'll get to that in a minute. This space is not for white people. This space is for people of color. What if somebody who was white said this place isn't for Asians? It's for people of uh, it's for white people. Black people, you can't come. This is for white people. Why that would be called racist. You know what? I wouldn't do it either because it's racist. Stupid. Indeed, Blackhorns claim that white people should be excluded from certain spaces or events at the college is no different philosophically to how black people were similarly discriminated against during segregation. Amen. By asserting the contrived myth of white privilege, predominantly white liberals are attempting to rationalize the clearly ludicrous notion that it is possible to be racist towards white people. In reality, this mentality functions as a crass and cynical ploy to shut down the debate to discriminate a the equality of a person's freedom of speech based on the color of their skin, which is the very epitome of racism. That is absolutely true in every way. That is a correct view. Friends, um, if you're in Canton, Ohio, um, check out the Arcadia Grill. Absolutely delicious food made exactly the way you want it made. Go to the bar, you'll get, you get a drink made perfectly every time. Why? Because it's the Arcadia Grill. That's how they do things perfectly. Uh, check out their breakfast. Make sure you go down there on first Friday. It's always a blast. They've got people doing uh, singing and like, little trios and stuff in the corner of the restaurant. Go check it out. Go check it out. Um, also, Mike McLaughlin, go online on Facebook.com. He writes short stories. He writes really good short stories. He writes poetry even now. Um, you know what you should do? You should go there and let him know you want to read some of them. Tell him, Sam, from the correct view sent you. You want to read the stories Mike McLaughlin's writing. Why? Because you're not a Barbie doll that wants to dumb herself down. How's that for a reason? 
All right, guys, maybe this is it. Maybe I should cue up the music. We got it. This time we got it. No, but we're getting close. Student arrested, expelled for pocket knife found in car. Kit Daniel in fours. An Ohio student, what the hell is going on in my state, is now considering a lawsuit, and I hope he does, after school officials searched his car without his consent and found a pocket knife leading to his arrest. Jordan Weiser, an EMT trainee, keep in mind they need these knives to train to cut people out of uh, safety harnesses and uh, seatbelts and that kind of thing. And yeah, I, I would argue we should have been allowed to carry it if his major was uh, algebra, math, science, accounting. Why? Music. Because you're allowed to defend yourself. You're allowed to have a weapon to defend yourself. You never know when some freak is going to be out there. That's why. Jordan Weiser, an EMT trainee who needed his knife, who attends Estabula County Technical School in Jefferson, spent 13 days in jail for the three-inch knife officials found and reported to police. He was charged with illegal conveyance of a weapon onto a school ground, despite the fact that the knife was found in Weiser's first responder vest and used for slicing an accident victim's seatbelt. Well, now it's nice to know that the next generation of EMTs will have absolutely no training in cutting you out of something as your car burns, you're unconscious, or you're in the freaking water. You know what? My God, they almost got the dunk cap of the month. The, the, the ones I'm getting to, it was so close, people. It was so close. If you uh, condemn me in my comment line, I'll understand why. I mean, this... I declined to allow them to search myself or my car, and I wanted to talk to my lawyer or my father, Weiser told Fox News. They told me that wasn't an option. That's because you're in socialist America. The school officials claimed that they had proven locales to search Weiser's car based on a message Weiser supposedly wrote online, and that possession of the school's pocket knife was a violation of the school's zero tolerance policy. We need to outlaw zero tolerance policies if we outlaw anything. We indicate that we have the right to search, and he was aware of that policy, school superintendent Jerome Brockway, Nazi, and making said, who seemingly thinks that the school policy trumps the Fourth Amendment. Weiser stated that he's seriously considering a lawsuit. We should raise money for him to do so. It's definitely an option, he added. The officials apparently thought that reading an online message Weiser supposedly wrote gave them probable cause to search his vehicle without a warrant. This unreasonable search is similar to the incident that occurred in a private school in Pennsylvania. And uh, again, in February, a Chicago school suspended an eighth grader under uh, zero policy for a snowball because he threw it at an officer. An uh, eighth grader claims, you made me mad. And uh, yeah, so, you know, we, we take the kid for a snowball and uh, suspend him, of course. That's what we do. This is also InfoWars. Oh, my God. Let's get the music. Let's get the music. Why? I, let's get the music. We got it. We got it. Let's do it. No, no, we can't. I can't. This is just the runner up. I was sure all month that I was going to give the Dunce Cap of the Month award to either Michelle Obama or the only person who I detest more, Beyonce. Um, when I say that I hate these wenches, I do not mean I want some freak to hurt them or otherwise uh, violate any of their rights. What I'm saying is they are socialist, but Beyonce's case, socialist satanic pigs. They are the very epitome of what's wrong with our country. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, baby, my halo, oh, 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 worst voice I've ever heard. Well, a Michelle Obama supports campaign to ban sexist words. The first story I saw on this was that Beyonce had also done it, which is why I'm including her in it. Oh, my God. Taking a page out of George Orwell's 1984, where words are banned by a totalitarian state to limit thought, Michelle Obama has thrown her weight behind a campaign to ban the word bossy, the bossy tramp. All right, how about instead of bossy, how about tramp? How about hypocrite? Because she wants all of us to limit what we eat, where she eats the most fattening foods in the world. How about uh, selfish for being uh, all uppity at every event she goes to if her husband looks like he's having any fun? Keep in mind, I'm not an Obama fan myself, but I, I feel for the man being married to this pterodactyl. Is that better than bossy? Um, keep in mind, uh, uh, Michelle Obama always has Jay-Z and Beyonce coming over for performances, 
ho and bitch and nigga. That's all fine. But you can't say bossy because it's against the women. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. If you act like that, you're bossy and you're a jerk. Is jerk a good word for you, you prick? Twat. Flotus, first lady of the United States, tweeted her support for the campaign, which is receiving national media attention, for having been backed by celebrities such as Beyonce. Apparently, Beyonce, as well as Sony Entertainment, which supports the campaign, isn't too concerned about the fact that her trampy husband and the Obama's close personal friend, Jay-Z, routinely refers to women as bitches and other kinds of vulgarities in their songs. I do actually approve of referring to uh, Beyonce as a bitch instead of bossy. That's, that's a good idea. We'll go with that. Critics immediately shot back at Obama for lending her support to such a chilling notion, making comparisons to Orwell's Ingsoc. Um, let's see, it also says, remember when Bush's White House banned the words he didn't like and MSM was totally cool with it? Me neither, tongue-in-cheek. Girls are less interested in leadership than boys, and that's because they're worried about being called bossy. No, they're probably more worried about being called a bitch, but you think that's fine. The solution is to ban the word altogether by encouraging parents, employees, and teachers to strip it from their vocabulary and re-educate any poor, unsuspecting bigot who dares utter it in public. What a bossy move. Illustrating once more how feminism is a top-down tool to control Marxism, where language and culture takes the blame for all oppression, thereby absolving the state, which is the true source of oppression. The campaign is the work of LeanIn.org, which itself supported a plethora of big banks, transnational corporations, and PR firms. You limit it with something like that in order to help women, and soon you can ban things, or, you know, words like Jesus, words like uh, um, Bill of Rights. You, you can start banning anything. Second wave feminism does little or nothing to advance genuine women's rights concerns, such as the recent designation of female drivers as potential terrorists in Saudi Arabia. No, you never hear anything about that because Bush and Obama and everybody prior has this uh, shoulders deep in uh, BS with them because of oil and uh, uh, trade agreements and whatnot. We don't talk about uh, what they get in Saudi Arabia, how their women get mistreated. We're more worried about their in Masi. And everything to hide behind the veil of equality as a justification for trampling on everyone's free speech rights. Given that literature is a replete with examples of sexist, patriarchal, and outdated language, forget just banning words. Why don't they start banning books? After all, it's for the children. All right, guys, that brings us to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And I don't think on my high def is even going to make it. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, listen up, guys. What wins the Dunce Cap of the Month Award? Private school defense strip searching child says the constitutional rights do not apply. What? Steve Watson in for wars, guys. It is the dust cap of the month winner right here. A mother told a federal court this week that school officials in Pennsylvania told her that they were within their rights to strip search her daughter, asserting that the school does not have constitutional rights because she is in a private school. The incident, which occurred last year, saw officials at the Milton Hershey School in Harrisburg order the girl identified only as CW to remove her shirt because they suspected that she had a cell phone on her person. Oh, my God, she could kill somebody with that. Such devices are considered contraband at the school. That's what they call it in prisons. I wonder if that's a coincidence. Which is described as cost-free private co-educational home and private school for pre-kindergarten through 12th grade students for the families of low income, limited resources, and social needs operating in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Therefore, it is perfectly legal to take the clothes off of a child to check for a cell phone just because they go to that school and they're poor. The court complaint states that the school's nurse touched CW all over her body, including her chest, feeling for a smartphone. None was found. 
After the strip search, CW feeling violated was visibly upset, crying and shaking, according to the case. The mother, Trina Howells, is suing the school, thank God, saying that the procedure was conducted without her knowledge of presence. When Howells called a student, a home supervisor, she was told that CW does not have constitutional rights because she is in a private school and that the school is backed up by the Derry County Police Department. And that's, it is what it is, Mrs. Howells. That's what was said to her. So, what have we learned today? We've learned that a private school can trump the rights of the Constitution, and so can the Derry County Police. I didn't see it when I read it either, but it must be in there. Howells' complaint states that her daughter's rights under the Fourth Amendment and Fourteenth Amendment to ensure personal security and bodily integrity and freedom of governmental intrusion were violated. CW had the right to be free from the intrusive and physical examination, the lawsuit states. Plaintiff House had the right to attend the strip search. The school defendants violated those rights by ordering the strip search for plaintiff CW without the consent of plaintiff House. So, in order to catch a student with a cell phone, it is perfectly justifiable now to strip search a child. Put your hands all over a topless child, not looking for a gun. Not even a toy gun. Looking for a cell phone. Yeah, they couldn't have just called and listened for a vibration. No, not in America. That's too stupid. Um, Christelle is in the room. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around when I'm done reading. I do believe the HDEF memory card has gotten kaputs. So we're probably only going to be low def. So try to line this up as best you can. Uh, here's what I've got, guys. But I don't have a cell phone. I don't care. You have no rights. Now strip. Little stick figures that she drew. Private school, no rights. Uh, beautiful picture of a cell phone. But go ahead and make sure my low deaf people can see it, since that might be all there is. All right, and inside, of course, designed by Christelle for political satire only, no harm meant. I don't want to break their zero policy program. They may come to my home and take my clothes off. All right, guys, I'm going to read this to you. Then I'm going to turn the computer around so that I can show you guys what it looked like because I put a lot of thought into it. And I went to print it with the printer that Mike McLaughlin donated to the show. And uh, the power supply is, uh, for some reason, it's not wanting to read. I'm going to bore my listeners to death. But I'll get it working by the end of the night. I will show it to you at the end of this. Guys, here's what I wrote. The Duds Cap of the Month Award. And I would say that something as serious as this, friends, Needs the serious voice. Maybe not. We live in a world of rampant idiocy, I wrote, full of disrespectful children who seem incapable of displaying any respect for the rights of those around them. And a growing number of people have uh, pondered just where such disrespect springs from. Thankfully, I wrote, you adults at Milton Middle School have taken a step in solving of that question by strip searching a child for the sole purpose of finding a cell phone which we all know is potentially deadly and therefore is worth violating rights such as the 4th and 14th. Not content there, you at Milton announced in front of a federal court as well as the world that a person's rights do not apply in a private school, akin to jail or a prison. So perhaps I go on, these students feel that they can take rights away on the streets with muggings, break-ins, robbing, and otherwise violating the rights of others just as you've taught them. And I write that they can see their presentation at youtube.com slash the correct views. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm not exactly sure how in seven hell we're going to have to do, Chris, is make sure that the image of me is centered and then call up the Photoshop feather so that everybody can see it online. Friends, as she does this, let me remind you that you are listening to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangie, who you won't be able to see because she's focusing on a certificate. Sam I B. DeGangie, reporting for the Media Speaks. Go to themediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Court D. Lake and myself. And please donate to the show, like Mike McLaughlin and the Arcadia Grill do, because every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. And uh, Christelle, is it up? That is what was set. It's going in the mail to this month's Dust Cap of the Month Award winner. They're going to get this beauty right here at Milton Middle School. Good night, friends. Do a screenshot because my computer weighs nine pounds and I'm going to put it down. God bless.
Check me out. See ya. Adios.